Hi, this is Mr. Collier, and this is the second of two videos about Protus. And so in this video, we're going to address the remaining supergroups uh, which make up the domain Eukarya. So let's get started. The first group, the Chromal Veolata, this group actually has two distinct subgroups. The Straminopiles, uh, which consist of these organisms shown here, the brown algae, diatoms, golden brown algae, and water molds. These organisms <clears throat> are distinctly different, yet related to this alveolates group, which includes the dinoflagellates, ciliates, and apicomplexians. And so the Straminopiles... The brown algae that we find in this group is characteristic of, or what you and I would commonly refer to as kelp. And so all members of the Straminopiles um, at one time had chlorophyll C, and so that is what these organisms have in common. And although some of them are now actually heterotrophic, or have even lost this chlorophyll, um, molecular similarities suggest that they are related. So these organisms are found uh, typically in, uh, in <clears throat> lower depths of the photic zone or the portion of the ocean where light penetrates. And so the development of this pigment, these accessory pigment, pigments found, d allows them to absorb light at the, these particular wavelengths that would be found. Also included in the straminopiles are diatoms. And so these ornate ornately uh, shaped organisms are photoautotrophic and so they use photosynthesis to produce uh, in order to produce food and they also form these uh, beautiful silica shells and so in many marine food webs these are going to be the primary producers and so they're what we would often refer to as plankton and so they form a very very significant part of the um, ocean uh, marine system Golden brown algae is an organism or a group of organisms that are actually unicellular and flagellated. And so while the name is similar to that of the brown algae, they uh, are rather somewhat different. And so uh, the name golden brown algae refers to this color, which they derive from a yellow-brown keratinoid or pigment that is found in some of their chromoplasts. The fourth member of the Straminopiles is water molds. And so this name is a little misleading since they are found both in water and on land. And so more frequently these are com these are referred to as the Uumycetes, which literally means egg fungus. And historically, scientists classified these organisms as fungi. And while they have many similarities, they are not closely related. And so these similarities these similar features that they have were developed through uh, convergent evolution rather than having evolved from a common ancestor. The second group in the Chromoveolata supergroup, uh, the second, is this alveolates. And so alveolates are so named because of the presence of alveoli, which is an air sac that is found beneath the membrane. Some members of the alveolates uh, include the dinoflagellates, and so dinoflagellates are these unicellular photoautotrophic algae, so they're going to use sunlight in order to produce energy. Uh, they also have this cell, this cell plate that is made of cellulose, and so cellulose is the same substance which plants use to uh, make their cell walls. And so you can uh, tell by the picture here where the name dinoflagellates probably uh, came from. The ciliates include the uh, paramecium would be an example of a cilia. And so paramecium, like other ciliates, have the cilia, which is which they where their name comes from. And the cilia are these hair-like projectiles of cytoplasm that actually allow the ciliates to move and uh, in some cases um, even create like a current in order to essentially like direct food into their, um, into their uh, mouth. <clears throat> the apicomplexians is a group of non-motile, meaning that they, they don't move. Um, these protozoa actually are all parasites of animals. And so one of the characteristic uh, members of the apicomplexians is the organism, the, pla <clears throat> uh, the plasmodium that causes malaria. And so this organism uh, resides in... Uh, humans as well as mosquitoes, and so it again is a uh, parasitic uh, protozoa. 
The supergroup Excavata includes uh, the organisms uh, called Euglena or the Euglenans. And so Euglenans are a group of freshwater unicellular organisms. And so some of these are autotrophic, like the Euglena shown here, while um, that's only about a third of them that have chloroplasts. So these other organisms are going to uh, be heterotrophic. And uh, some organisms are actually uh, mixotrophic, meaning that they both they derive energy from both photo auto, um, photosynthesis or um, from, from eating organisms like an animal. <clears throat> the parabasalids and the diplomonads are unicellular flagellated endosymbionts. And so endosymbionts means that these organisms are going to reside inside other organisms. And so one of these characteristic ones is uh, this uh, Gerardia that is pictured here. And so Gerardia is the culprit in a uh, condition that sometimes affects uh, campers um, in which they'll ingest, ingest this um, and it kind of wreaks havoc on their intestine. The supergroup Amoebozoa includes our amoeboids and our slime molds. The amoeboids uh, are the uh, amoebas, and so these organisms have pseudopods, um, or false feet, and then they also, uh, these organisms also feed by phagocytosis. And so phagocytosis is where they essentially um, envelop or uh, draw in their food into their cell membrane, and so they'll form a food vacuole in order to do that. And so an amoeba is going to eat things like um, bacteria, algae, um, other Protozo uh, protozoa, and so um, essentially anything that's smaller than it. The slime molds includes both what's called plasmodial slime molds and single-celled or uh, cellular slime molds. And so the difference is that a plasmodial slime mold is a, is um, is much like multiple cells, and so it's uh, multinucleated. Um, yet they're all enclosed into a single thing, uh, single sheet. And so these organisms are important uh, decomposers, uh, particularly of plant material. And so they're, um, they, they're found in uh, forests as well as in agricultural fields. The epistocons, which includes the animals and fungi, also include the coanoflagellates and the nuclearids. And so the coanoflagellates are a protozoan that is closely related to sponges. In fact, they are also filter feeders. So they're uh, both unicellular and colonial. And so here you can see two examples of colonial co coanoflagellates. The nuclearids are a single-celled organism that feed on algae or cyanobacteria. And uh, while they lack the characteristic cell wall, uh, molecular similarities do suggest that these organisms may be uh, close relatives of fungi. The last supergroup is the Rosaria, and so these groups were actually these organisms were actually at one time believed to um, been related to the amoeba uh, because they also have uh, these pseudopods. Uh, we now know that they are. Um, they are not as closely related as we once believed. Um, both organisms form a uh, test, which is a going to be an external um, skeleton. <clears throat> um, and for aminifarians, it's formed from calcium carbonate. And so these organisms actually comprise, um, uh, or the remains of these organisms form a layer of sediment that we found find on the ocean floor. The radiolarians, uh, they have a silicon test, and their set test is actually internal. And so the radiolarians uh, refers to the fact that they have a radial symmetry um, in their shells. And so that is the protist, and I hope that you learned something.